We are set to go to another estate sale. It's a four bedroom house built in 1968. So let's go in, see what treasures we can find. All right, shut the music. They're gonna hear me coming if you play it that loud. All right, now look, the treasure's right there by the yellow arrow, but they can't see it because the arrow's behind them. Now, really, what happens is that you see the overhang there? These eight tracks overhang the box on the bottom, and I always talk about digging for treasures, but you also have to look underneath overhangs for treasures. That's another form of digging because you've got this vintage Centrex 8-track player which could easily sell for $150 to $200 if it works. And that gets into another problem with testing 8-track players. A lot of times people will press the button like this and they'll say, oh, it doesn't work because it's not lighting up even though you plugged it in. But that's because you have to grab one of the 8-tracks and you have to put it in first and now look see it lights up that's what you got to do so a little trick there if you didn't know about how to test out the eight track players all right on to the next treasure and yes you've got that right it's a bose sound system with an ipod docking system wait till you hear what i got all this for by the way it's crazy now you couldn't hear it turn on when i was uh, there and plugged it in so i took it back and you could hear it right now And it does work. I just cannot uh, play the music for you because I don't want any kind of copyright violation. But you just put the uh, iPod in like that, turn on, and boy, oh boy, it plays great. It's actually going to be hard for me to sell this because the sound is so awesome. But there you can see this should be, you know, about a $100 sale or so. All right, now to the right of the Bose, we have another treasure. You see it says Panasonic on that manual. We've got the remote control as well. This all goes to a DVD player and recorder. If you want to check the comps, all you got to do is look for that model number on the back. You can see there it's on the right. And pre-owned, this goes for as high as $150, even without the remote. Now, I need to test this. The problem is I don't have a power cord. So I'm going to put it to the side for now. You'll see why in a moment. Give it a little double tap for good luck. And uh, right now, I want you to just focus on the labels, by the way, because that's important. You see that says Sylvania or Sylvania, and then below it says Daywood. I mean, no one cares about those brands. Panasonic, people like. Bose, people like. Uh, the Centrex in the beginning, that went with Pioneer. Those are all big name brands. That's what you want to look for with these electronic pieces. Now, you can see that's where it was sitting. And remember that when they're doing estate sale prep, things get separated beforehand and so sometimes someone will take all the cables and they'll just throw them in a big box and they'll separate it from what it may have originally belonged to so keep that in mind because you know you could see here there's a lot of cables that most people are going to think are just junk but for me these things are gold because this is what allows me to test those DVD players and other electronics that I get, and I could include that when I send it uh, to the buyer. And so that's attractive uh, to the listing to say that you have the cables. And so I actually have just recently run out of uh, most of my cables, so I really needed to restock. So this was great, getting all these different cables. I mean, there were HDMI cables in here, component cables, but look at this. That sure looks like a power cord that would go to that DVD player. Does it fit? Yes, it does. It fits. So all we got to do is plug it in, plug it in, plug it in, and see what happens. <laughs> there we go. Plug it in, and hello? Hello? Hello! Yes, it works. Awesome. I can hear the cha-chings in my ears as I'm... Uh, Looking at that hello sign, super pumped up. So here you can see how I've got everything stacked up and time to move on. Do, 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 I don't know why I feel like making the jaws sound when I walk in there. But uh, even look up top, you know, fly sticks. Yeah, it's made by Raid. People want them. Sold it for $12.99 already. All right, here's another good example of digging to the bottom to look for stuff to resell. Uh, this, at first glance, just looks like your regular old standard bookshelf. Uh, you can see here I'm turning stuff over just to see if that was anything of value. It wasn't, but on the bottom there, 
I saw what looked to be like photo blocks. And inside, you could see here, these are Syracuse University players. Uh, first, we've got two basketball ones. The first one's Derek Coleman. This one is Pearl Washington. Now, they're famous players and everything, but those... Uh, pictures aren't worth anything because the signatures on them are print signatures. Uh, but this one is not a print signature. If you look at it closely enough, you could tell that it's actually a real signature. Now, this is Marvin Graves, a uh, former quarterback from Syracuse, not a real famous player like the first two players I showed you, but still something that could sell for about 15 to 20 bucks. And yes, I'll remove it from the frame before I sell it. Now, over here on the opposite end of the hallway, you could see there are a bunch of baseball caps sitting here. The first one was just a blank black one, but uh, the other ones were uh, mostly Yankee caps, and they were nice and bright and colorful, and some of them were new with tags. They'll probably sell for about 15 bucks a piece, and I uh, grabbed all of them, including this black one in the back, and then went back to this one and decided to pick it up because even though it's not a famous brand, it has to do with cigars and golf. So there's got to be a guy out there who's going to want that. Give it a little double tap for good luck. And sure enough, you could see one of those has sold. So uh, I just left the plain blank black one over there. Now, uh, these halogen uh, lighting kit lamps, uh, they are new, made by a company named Westec, but it's new old stock. Uh, but stuff like this sells. People look for things like this for projects or replacements for ones they had in the past. Uh, you know, it should sell for around 27 bucks. That's actually my listing right there. So now we're going to look in this room. And you could see here, uh, this is upstairs now. This is something to be on the lookout for. I don't even think the state sale dealers knew uh, that this had this flaw on it. You can see that it's priced, but just goes to show you have to check this stuff over because you can see when you take off that lid, there is a chip in it and it's a jagged edge and stuff, and it's just not going to be anything of value. So I, I left that behind. Now, this is something that's going to be a really nice value. It has a little uh, a jewelry piece over the front of it, but that's not what I'm uh, looking for. Uh, this is just amazing right here. Uh, this is Bianchi. Uh, this is uh, made in Italy. It's a really nice, solid, structured, religious statue. It's like a Madonna statue. Now that's a, a different one, but you could see what these types of things could sell for. And then look at this. Could you believe that people left this there? And it's a stand-up cardboard Heineken beer bottle display advertisement. This thing's amazing, and I think people leave it there because they think it's just too big to carry around. But look, it just folds over in half. That's all you have to do. And then this is what I do with my box. I leave a little slit on the side between two nested boxes, and I just put it right in there, and it protects it as I walk around. That's my listing right there for that item. Now wait until I tell you about this electronic chess game. This is a really cool game called Chess Challenger. It comes from the 1970s. Now you have to look at the uh, serial number on the back because that's going to tell you and give you an indication of how old it is. The earlier serial numbers go for much more money. Like you could see here, uh, this one went for $350, but that's a much earlier model than the one I have, which, you know, maybe I could get 50 bucks out of it. Um, but, you know, you could even just take the pieces off and sell those for around 25 bucks if you have those. Uh, there is the uh, actual power cord that goes with the unit. So just had to plug it in, see if it works. And it does. So we're good to go. Now, I couldn't believe this. Uh, and this is the same room sitting right here. We've got a Sony camcorder, a Sony camcorder sitting here for $5. Plus, there's all these accessories in it. Now, again, just look on the bottom for the model number. It's got a little chip in the plastic, but who cares? That will still sell. Someone will overlook that. It just has to work. And, you know, even, frankly, even if it doesn't work, someone will just buy it for parts. And for $5, I don't even care if someone wouldn't buy it for parts. Just the stuff in the bag or the bag alone would be something profitable. That's why I'm pointing just to the bag. But here you can see, like, you know, with just some accessories, you know, this could be about a $200 item. So uh, this is me back at Primetime Treasure Headquarters just showing you the layout of everything that was in the bag. We have a power charger, which is important. Uh, we've got batteries. We've got, um, you know, cassettes, one of which is sealed. Uh, different lenses and lens caps and 
Um, we've got the official Sony uh, shoulder strap and, you know, just all sorts of like odds and ends, including like cleaning kit supplies and everything. So, you know, I was just so excited. A uh, plus, as you could see here, uh, I know it might be a little bit blurry, but uh, I did turn it on. The battery actually worked even without me charging it. There still was some juice left in the thing. And I was flipping through all the different modalities and stuff. And uh, again, I'm happy to say that this does work. So, I mean, that's just great. Now, yes, I did see the Ken Griffey Jr. Honey Frosted Wheaties box, but unfortunately, they made a million of them and it doesn't sell. Now, um, or not for much, go into closets and even though it looks like at first glance, there's just a bunch of boring stuff in there that's, you know, not really worth anything. Ah, uh, look at this. We've got some kind of cool looking bag here. Now, I think this might be a laptop bag. Uh, this company also makes golf bags and stuff. So I have to look into it a little bit more. But uh, with all those different components in it, it looks in great shape. Someone's definitely going to buy that, the backpack stuff on it. So it's awesome. Uh, on the way, uh, checking out, there was some uh, jewelry that I grabbed for Mrs. Primetime. Put everything in a big box and... Uh, just got one big bulk price for everything. So uh, she loved these pieces when I brought them back to her. So uh, waiting to hear what I got everything for. All right, I'm back at Primetime Treasure Headquarters and the total cost for everything was $30. They just gave me a bulk price for everything that was in the box. So that was awesome. Can't wait to start processing this stuff and getting it listed. Wow, that was so much fun at that estate sale. I felt like a kid in a candy shop. Now we're not done. I'm going to show you a really cool sale Mrs. Primetime made for 50 bucks. Flipped it on Facebook Marketplace. I showed it to you previously, so maybe some of you will remember it. Uh, also, we're going to do a little uh, visit between Daisy and Gizmo in person or in animal. I'm not sure exactly how you would phrase that, but yes, this is not going to be another uh, video of Daisy begging to see Gizmo from the door. I see Gizmo. Before we do that, make sure you go and check out the eBay store of the legendary Julie Busby. Yes, of Chichingathon fame. She wins the comic books like 99.9% .9 of the time in the auction. Go visit her eBay store. Check it out. She's rebuilding it after a move, and so she would appreciate the support. Uh, she's been so supportive of this channel, so it's just one uh, way I could support her as well. Uh, definitely go check it out. The link will be in the description section and in the comment section, as I do for all people who are members of the channel. You know, someone asked me the other day, said, how much is membership? I always say click the join button. I assume people know it just costs $1.99 a month. That's it. $1.99 a month for membership. So, uh... Again, just click the join button. There's so many perks. They're all listed there, but I'll feature your store or wherever it is that you sell in one of these videos. I'll put a link to it in the description section and in the comment section. Plus, I'll also do that uh, in my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. If you're not a member, go join it. A lot of fun over there. Very educational, very friendly as well. Got about 27,500 members there. So lots of room for exposure, lots of perks. Click the join button. Oh, look at this. What we got here. Remember this? Mrs. Primetime bought this. That's right. Well, she did decide to sell it after all. She's selling it for $50. So she's going to include some of these jewelry pieces in it as well. So good for her. Whoops. Almost dropped it again. <laughs> Yeah, so she got it for $10, so $40 profit. She's running over here right now, so I don't drop any more drawers before they come pick it up. <laughs> oh, Daisy, who's that? It's Gizmo. It's Gizmo. It's Gizmo right there. There he is. Hey, Gizmo, hi there. <laughs> Hello, lovebirds. <laughs>